Today, I'm going to open up a box of Legendary decks too. Since it's themed around three of the OG characters, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! Nostalgia Month is a good time to open it. This was a donation to the channel, and has been unwrapped because there is quite a lot of plastic in this. Starting off with some of the promotional cards, we have Eternal Soul, Dark Burning Attack, and Dark Burning Magic, because Dark Magician gets all the support. Moving on to the Joey deck, we have Black Stone of Legend to tutor out the Red Eyes Black Dragon, Return of Red Eyes to function as a bad call the Haunted, and the boss monster Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, which is known for being degenerate in some cases since it can burn for so much damage and lead to infinite loops due to the mandatory effect. Then to bring it out, we have Red Eyes Black Dragon, abbreviated to Red Eyes B Dragon. I think this card has gotten an erratum since. Then the Gemini equivalent, Red Eyes Black Flare Dragon, Red Eyes Archfiend of Lightning, which is a little bit weird because I don't think Meteor Dragon is in here. Red Eyes Retro Dragon and Black Metal Dragon, and then some normal monsters. Axe Raider. Alligator Sword, Baby Dragon, which actually do have a function in the deck, but not a great one in my opinion. Then moving on to some good goat cards, we have Genzo for Trap Suppression, Goblin Attack Force for a big number, Gearfried the Iron Knight, which could potentially be banned because of the degenerate interaction it has with cards like Butterfly Dagger Elma and Smoke Grenade of the Thief, Rocket Warrior to get over big things, Blue Flame Swordsman, because we don't want the purple blue fl <laughs> because we don't want the purple flame swordsman in this pack apparently time wizard phoenix gear freed gemini summoner gemini's are definitely a big part of this deck blazewing butterfly dark valkyria command knight i'm not sure if this is a joey card valkyrian knight keeper of the shrine inferno fire blast this is the first of the attack cards, where the boss monster has a signature attack. Each of the decks has at least one. I think the Yugi deck actually has more than one. Star player of the deck, we have Red Eyes Fusion, followed by cards for Redstone, for very needed draw power, and also a little bit of deck thinning and graveyard setup, which is quite a strong card, and I understand why there's a once per turn. Polymerization, bring out fusions. Salamandra, which is good theming because this is actually one of the cards that showed off in the scene where Joey is trading cards on the boat on the way to Duelist Kingdom. There's another one that's in the deck too. Scapegoat, that's a signature Joey card. Foolish Burial, Graveyard Setup. Roulette Spider, random chance that's a Joey. Supervised, go with the Gemini support. Mystical Space Typhoon, just because of staple. Mystical Staple Typhoon. Symbols of Duty. Red Eyes Spirit. Kunai with Chain. This is the other card that was featured in that same scene. Call of the Haunted. I'm not sure if he ever got Call of the Haunted. This was more of a Bones card. And a little redundant since we got the return of the Red Eyes. Torrential Tribute. Good Mass Removal. Burst Breath. I wish this card was better than it actually is. It's just so flavorful. Curse of Anubis. And then in the extra deck, we have Archfiend Black Skull Dragon, which I guess it makes sense why this would take the place of Meteor Black Dragon. And Alligator Sword Dragon, which has just such an odd effect. This card can attack your opponent directly if the only face up monsters they control are earth, water, or fire. Which is just weird. <laughs> it gets blocked by light, dark, and wind. I don't think the card would be overpowered if it could just attack directly, but that's just something to think about. Moving on to the Yugi deck, we have the three Egyptian god cards, Slifer the Sky Dragon, Obelisk the Tormentor, and the Winged Dragon of Ra. 
in my opinion, Slife of the Sky Dragon is undervalued because it has an effect to shut down your opponent from summoning, at least with smaller, weaker monsters. Of course, Obelisk gets all the attention because of the inherent protection. I'm not sure I've ever seen Obelisk's effect activate, though. And then Winged Dragon of Ra, which is the Winged Dragon of Ra. Note that these are normal backs, so these are tournament legal, which is exciting. I had one of the blue Obelisk the Tormentor cards, but these are so much better. They're functional. The legendary Exodia Incarnate, functioning as a second win condition with Exodia. In fact, there's deep Exodia theme. Ties of the Brethren as such a flexible tutor. This card's fantastic. Cost is a little steep, summoning restriction a little steep, but I think this card just enables so many fun plays. Obliterate. That's Exodia's attack, but not the attack card for the deck. And of course, the five pieces of Exodia to summon it, and Exodia Necros, just for a little bit extra protection. This card is almost a good boss monster. I wonder if it can be tributed. Yeah. Oh, Kaiji's ruined this one too. We have Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl, and Buster Blader. Unfortunately, there's no Dark Paladin in the extra deck, which I think is a lost opportunity considering you got Dark Magician Buster Blader. Silent Swordsman level 8, and the level 4 to bring it out. The Tricky, which is almost a good card. Cyber Dragon just puts it to shame, though. Big Shield Gardena, Sleeper Goat Hit, in my opinion. Magician's Valkyrie, Blast Magician, Blockman, I'm not sure if this is a Yuki card. Marshmallon, this card, in limited formats, can just stall out forever. When you don't have much removal, Marshmallon is very scary. Sangan, with the post erratum text, which is pretty good. It's a shame what they did to Sangan. Gold Sark. This card's probably going to be banned. It bounces around the list a lot, but it just enables so many interesting cards. Swords of Revealing Light and Mag <laughs> Swords of Revealing Light and Magicians Unite. Rhyming cards. Had to put them next to each other just to trip me up. Magical Dimension. This card reads better than it uh, reads better than it is, and it's not, it's not great. Got to tribute the spellcaster, and then it destroys. It's minus one. This card, quick play spell card, tons of initiative. Tribute the tricky. Tri that part is tricky, but as far as a comeback card, this could swarm the field, and you could make link monsters with those tokens. They can't declare an attack, but this card has potential. Scary potential. Thousand Knives. Is that a Dark Magician attack? Or just something Hisora does? Contract with Exodia to bring out the Exodia Necros. Dark Magic Attack. That's the signature attack of Dark Magician, of course. Messenger of Peace, because the deck wasn't degenerate enough yet. Dark Factory of Mass Production. I think the only targets are to bring back Exodia pieces if you happen to discard them. Which is not great. This card might have been better in the Joey deck. Monster Reincarnation for the same purpose. And another degenerate card, Secret Village of the Spellcasters. This card deserves to be banned because it just says some games you're not going to be allowed to play unless you're playing a spellcaster deck or have a Magician of Faith that you can normal summon on the first turn or something ridiculous like that. Pot of Duality. Shame that the meta is too fast for this card because I think it's one of the best design pots. Yugi Staple Mirror Force. This is my first copy of the card, so I'm excited about that. Magical Hats to protect the Dark Magician, of course. And the Magic Cylinder for the same function. Yugi has a lot of battle suppression. Backup Soldier to get back your Dark Magician. No. To get back your Exodia pieces. Magician Circle. Gravity Bind and a token.
And finally, we're going to end with the Kaiba deck. We have Maiden with Eyes of Blue, Melody of the Awakening Dragon to tutor out the Blue Eyes White Dragon uh, alongside a lot of other dragons, actually. Get Rainbow Dragon with this card. Very strong. And the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which is a fusion of three Blue Eyes White Dragon. And they gave you one of each artwork from the OG sets, which is pretty nice. I think Blue Eyes is the card that has the most alternate artworks in the game. This is my favorite, probably. And it's not just for nostalgia. I, I genuinely really like the design of the card. We have Dragon Spirit of White, which is treated as a Blue Eyes card. Kaiba Man to bring out your Blue Eyes White Dragons. White Stone of Legend and White Stone of the Ancients as tutors for Blue Eyes. Protector with Eyes of Blue. Very important, level 1, tuner. It's got some text, but that's not as important as the rest of it. In fact, everyone in the Eyes of Blue clan seems to be a level 1 tuner monster. Got Battle Ox. Ooh, Lodge in the Mystic Genie of the Lamp. Ooh, this card actually has dual utility in the deck, believe it or not. Vorse Raider. Just strong card. You can bring it out with Tenki, of course. Alexandrite Dragon. 2,000 attack. So powerful. Blade Knight, because I'm filling out a lot of goat staples, it seems. Ancient Lamp. This card can bring out the Lodge and Mystic Genie of the Lamp, but as crazy as it sounds, its magical arms like its magical arms shield like effect actually means it saw a tiny bit of competitive experimentation in 2006 and 2007 at the very least. Then we have Tiger Dragon for a little bit of removal. Kid Moto Dragon is just so cute. This might be one of my favorite artworks. I'm going to have to think on that one. King of the Swamp to fetch Polymerization. And there's actually Fusion Substitute in the deck too. So that's another target. Rider of the Stormwinds is not an Eyes of Blue card. But another level 1 tuner to bring out the Azure Eyes Silver Dragon in the extra deck. Another attack card we have burst stream of destruction beacon of white as an equip card mausoleum of white to aid with the, uh, the eyes of blue clan polymerization to bring out your fusion monsters enemy controller and shrink these are real strong quick play spell cards if you're in like 2007 formats i think is when shrink was was popular shrink actually saw competitive play believe it or not Silent Doom to get back some of your normal monsters. Ancient Rules to special summon them from the hand. Trade End to get rid of them. Which, trade End's not bad. This card's real strong in the right deck. Where Art Thou? Which, this card sort of belongs in the Yugi deck, since you can tutor out a piece of Exodia with it, and you don't really care about the life point damage if you're running an Exodia deck. But getting all the Eyes of Blue cards isn't a bad idea either. Pot of Dichotomy. I don't think Joey got a pot card. I'm a little sad. Joey's getting the short end of the stick a lot today. Fusion Substitute, which functions as polymerization and has a bit more utility. Unexpected Die. This card's so good for tempo. Negate Attack. Final Attack Orders. Hmm, that's a contradiction. Shadow Spell. Cloning to clone your opponent's monster. Fusion Reserve as generic fusion re Fusion Reserve as generic fusion support. Jar of Avarice. I need to talk about the jar cards because very recently they released Jar of Generosity. But I'm just not ready for it. There's not a lot of them, so it'd be a real short discussion. Then of course we have Azure Silver Dragon. And first of the dragons is the other target. It's a little bit weird that there's only the two fusion monsters for the deck. I'm not sure what else I'd add in. Probably not like a Dragon Master Knight, that'd be ridiculous. But 
overall, I think the set is pretty interesting. If you mashed up all four decks, and I, and I guess these sport cards too, you could probably make a decent, decent deck. At least one that's more competitive. But as is, I think they're pretty cool. This product's non-randomized, so I can suggest it only if you need a lot of these staple cards, and even then, mostly just for convenience, as compared to having to buy them all as singles. But it still serves a function, and I like the deck. If I had another person on the channel, which is a little bit difficult due to current global events, I'd love to have a feature match between probably the Joey and the Kaiba deck, since Yugi's deck is just several shades of Degenerate, Messenger of Peace, Gravity Bind, and Exodia. I don't know why. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the opening.